ecoholics in the sequence of learning microeconomics today we have another topic another concept in front of you which is why the demand curve is downward sloping right so why this demand curve is downward sloping is a very important question that can be uh, can can intrigue you and can let you question the concept of law of demand and which is why we need to understand and we need to address that why exactly does the demand curve slope downwards right so for understanding that we frame a simple question that what happens when there is a downward slope in the demand curve so actually this is reason number 1 why more of a commodity is purchased when its price falls so when a certain commodity's price falls okay so uh, let's take an example of chocolates when the price of chocolates fall what happens because of the law of demand that we have learned in the previous lecture the quantity demanded increases and so the more of that commodity is purchased so instead of stating instead of stating why is the demand curve downward sloping we can also say that why more of a commodity is purchased when its price falls right now to understand this we have certain factors that need to be addressed okay so we will address these factors one by one the very first factor that we are going to see over here or the very first reason of why this happens is because of the law of diminishing marginal utility okay so let's understand this properly the law of diminishing marginal utility also called as the law of dmu now the law of diminishing marginal utility basically conceptualizes the idea that the utility of a consumer the satisfaction that is gained from consuming commodities by a consumer gradually declines okay so as more and more units a consumer will consume of a particular commodity the utility that is gained or the satisfaction that is gained from that commodity towards the customer or the consumer will decline just simply let's take an example of your favorite food item let's take pizza for that matter okay so let's assume that you love eating a pizza right now a pizza imagine that you go to a pizza shop one day and you order a pizza and there are four slices or six slices or you know any number of slices that you want to eat and you have your favorite topping and everything and you go for that pizza and you're highly satisfied your utility is maximized right because you were craving for a pizza and you ate that pizza but can you do it for every other day for 30 days in a month for like 365 days in a year of course not you will be really bored you will be terribly bored by the idea of pizza in a in the universe in the world right so which is why we apply the law of diminishing marginal utility to this concept and we say that when we draw a demand curve okay let me draw it somewhere else so when we draw a demand curve so here here we have the quantity demanded on the x axis and on the y axis you have price and you always say that this is the demand curve okay this is the demand curve which is a downward sloping curve and the slope is downwards uh, you know it's like this the reason being that there is application of diminishing marginal utility for every one unit of commodity that you are having your utility for it or for the satisfaction that you have gained for it will gradually decline and decline and decline right so this is one of the prime factors or one of the reasons why the 
downward slope in the demand curve actually happens. Okay, now let's take the next reason. What is the next reason? The next reason is income effect. Now here we are not talking about income effect in monetary terms, meaning that let's say your monthly income is 50,000 rupees and now next month your income has you know, increased to 65,000 rupees. We are not talking about increase or decrease in income monetary, uh, monetarily. Okay, we are talking about the real impact in the income. Now, let me explain this. We have talked that more commodities consumed when the price falls, right? So, let's apply this. Now, while we apply this, income effect, okay? Please remember that here we talk about the real impact on the income and not the monetary impact on the income, okay? Or any increase or decrease on the monetary level, we are not taking. We are taking the real impact. Abhi real impact kya hota hai? What is real impact? So, real impact of income effect is when uh, let's say that you were earning 50,000 rupees okay a month per month okay this is your income this is your income for um, all the months let's assume that out of which let's say that your grocery shopping your grocery shopping contributed to about 10,000 a month, right? 10,000 a month. So, out of your monthly income, 10,000 goes for grocery shopping for your monthly uh, expenses on um, FMCG goods, you know, biscuits, soaps, cereal, um, grocery items, your uh, daily uh, or monthly expenditure on household items. All of that is 10,000 per month, okay? Now, let's say that because of great discounts and festival discounts and month uh, end sales, etc, etc, the grocery shopping has, you know, now reduced because of the, all the discounts that you have used. It is 7,000, right? So, earlier, out of your 50,000, 10,000 used to go for grocery shopping. But now, because of those discounts, or maybe there's a coupon code that you have for grocery shopping because you uh, shop from a certain shop monthly. So, they have given you certain coupon codes and which is why now your grocery bill is only 7,000. So, which means what? The commodity price has reduced, which has given a 3,000 rupees window extra window which means your real income has now increased so this is known as income effect because of which you feel that okay now i have 3000 rupees remaining uh, which eventually i used to spend on grocery store or grocery items but now i think i can buy something more so this is also one of the factor that makes uh, a consumer purchase more commodities, okay? And so, gradually, the slope of the demand curve is diminishing, okay? Or uh, the uh, demand curve is downward sloping, okay? So, that's also one of the reasons. Now, we understand the reason number three. So, just to give you a brief about the reason number three, here we are talking about substitution effect. Now, substitution happens when a certain commodity is relatively cheaper by the, uh, by the comparison of some other commodity because there is a decrease in the price. Now, let's take a look at this sentence once again. We have said that why more of a commodity is being purchased by consumers uh, when its price falls. Now, just imagine about a certain brand of tea. Uh, here, I would like to give you a quick trivia. 
many economists and uh, many um, students i would say not economists in specific but students tend to say that you can substitute tea with coffee or coffee with tea however now that we are entering into a new era of economics where we talk about behavioral economics where we talk about consumer oriented economics we see that uh, tea and coffee are not very close substitutes there is relatively very specific preference with relations to uh, people who have tea and people who have coffee and then there are variants so of tea and coffee like milk tea green tea black tea and similarly black coffee latte mocha many many more right so let's not take tea and coffee as substitutes but the variants of tea and variants of coffee as substitutes and then let's look at substitution effect so like i said that substitution effect is when you compare it with some other commodity right um let's say that a certain brand of tea the price of a certain brand of tea has reduced okay now obviously it will be relatively cheaper than other different brands of tea right so now if you go to a supermarket and you have to purchase a tea you will compare okay this price uh, i'm getting this tea at this price and the other tea is relatively expensive or there are further discounts on a certain x tea and which is why the price is low so consumers are going to purchase more of that tea because they are a tea totlers and they drink tea right so that is a right kind of substitution effect that you should remember while even writing in the examinations don't do this uh, trivial uh, error or do not have this misconception that you know you can easily um, effectively substitute tea for coffee no you can't okay so that's what is your substitution effect that is your third reason of why people purchase more of certain commodities uh, when it the price of that commodity falls and this contributes to the downward slope of that particular demand curve right now the fourth constituent or the fourth reason to this question is the size of consumer group now simply if you uh, think about it um when the price of uh, your commodity falls for example the price of a certain tea or a coffee brand uh, falls more consumers are going to consume that particular brand and so the size of the group expands and when the size of the consumer group expands the demand in totality expands right so this is uh, another way of stating the same thing okay let me give you a small example to it so we are talking about the size of the consumer group right and here we are saying that when the price of a commodity decreases reduces the impact of it is that the quantity demanded will increase this is law of demand right inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded this can also be seen as the more of a commodity is purchased okay why because of its reduced price let's take a simple example of different uh, brands uh, branded apparel let's say we talk about uh, going to different stores okay to purchase uh, clothing apparel okay you go to shopper stop or zudio or uh, and or any other collection right um, so now what happens that these brands have uh, their collections okay at their uh, expensive price so they have certain collection at a very expensive price right and consumers who hold a priority and a preference to those stores and those brands they will purchase it no matter what right 
but what about the festivities or when there are um, functions like this Christmas sale, there's uh, end of season sale or there's uh, Diwali sale or any such sale. Okay, now what happens that there is a separate section or there are different separate sections wherein the commodities are at a maximum discount there is 50 percent discount 70 to 80 percent discount even sometimes 90 percent discount on the clothing apparel now what happens those people who had fascination towards these different brands which only sold expensive clothes now can enjoy the apparel by taking that discount taking that advantage right and which is why now what is happening the consumer group that initially was there and now which has expanded is because of this right so this is also one of the reasons why it contributes to more amount of quantity demanded and sold okay and now finally finally we have the last reason of increased purchase because when the price falls what happens so different uses a commodity can have multiple uses into which it can be utilized for satisfaction for consumption let's take the simple example of milk milk has different varieties of products okay or by products which are also equally importantly sold in the market and probably have much higher rate than milk in uh, milk in instead Right. So we have milk which is sold, which is sold to daily households, uh, consumed by daily households. Right. Then there is curd, there is um, uh, different other products, OK, which are whether it's sweet milk or buttermilk or uh, many, many other products which are utilized by the Indian and other international households. OK, which is much more expensive many a times than milk itself. But because milk in itself has this property of being utilized for different um, other uh, resources, which is why if the price of milk reduces, it will have a but natural, a positive impact, a favorable impact uh, for the customers, for the consumers on these different byproducts also. Right. So if milk is uh, the price of milk is reduced, the price of curd, the price of cottage cheese, the price of cheese, the price of buttermilk, everything will have a reduction, slight reduction. It will not be a very drastic reduction, but there can be like one to two rupees, three to four rupees reduction, right? So this is one of the other uh, reasons why different commodities uh, are uh, increased or the commodity um, the quantity demanded increases when the price reduces. This is one of the reasons also why when the price reduces of a certain commodity, the quantity demanded increases and then it has a, another impact. And so it contributes to the downward slope of the demand curve. So here we have five reasons of why the demand curve is downward sloping logically. And we also now know in reality what are these reasons and why the demand curve is downward sloping or let's say in colloquial economic language that why the commodities are purchased more when the price of it's reduced okay so that's it for today and we will have more such informative lessons on microeconomics and many other topics so stay tuned to ecoholics till then bye bye